In this video, we'll take a look at how to take the Node.js code of your Lambda function, bundle it and deploy it to AWS. We'll use a tool called Lambda Build, which makes it very easy and fast to bundle, archive and upload your code. All you need to do is point it to the code you wrote and it will do all the work for you and even publish your code to AWS. It uses ESBuild, which is very fast and efficient at bundling Node.js code. Let's start a new project and see how it works. Add this project that only contains one file, which is index.ts, and in this file we have this Node.js handler for our Lambda function. So let's try to use Lambda build to generate an archive which we can then upload to AWS. So first, let's install Lambda build globally. And now we can simply run it in our folder. The way it works is that it looks for the index.js or ts file in the folder in which it's being run. So in our case, we have this index.ts file. And what Lambda build does is first bundles it into a single JS file and then creates the archive.zip file. So let's create the Lambda demo function in our AWS console and then upload this archive.zip file to it. In the AWS console, let's create a new function. We'll call it Lambda demo. And by going to upload from and choosing a zip file, we can upload the file that was generated for us. So now the index.js file contains the bundled code that Lambda build generated. Let's try to run it. As a response, we get an empty object, which is what we return in our handler. So far, it's convenient that we have TypeScript code and Lambda build compiles it to JavaScript for us and creates a bundle. But the real benefit we get from bundling is when we start using NPM modules. So let's install a few. I installed these three dependencies, UUID, Faker, and Lodash. And now let's use them in our code. I'm also going to install their type libraries, but that's not something you need to do if you are not using TypeScript. Now our handler uses these three libraries to generate some value for us and return this object. And this is where the real value of bundling comes in. Now, if you want to upload our function, we need to upload not only our code, but also the node modules folder. And this folder now contains a lot of code that we don't necessarily need. Maybe these libraries have the source code or they have some documentation files or just files that are not being used. And when we use bundling, it eliminates all these files and only includes the code that we actually need. So not only it converts our TypeScript to JavaScript, it also only bundles the code that we need and that makes the cold start time of our Lambda function faster and in general makes the function smaller. Now let's also create a source folder and move our index.ts file into it. Now that we moved our index.ts file, we need to let lambda build know where to find it. By using the E flag, we can pass the new path to lambda build. Our new archive file was generated, and as you can see now, it's much bigger at 2.2 megabytes. When dealing with bundles, it's useful to know where all this size is coming from. And we can also use lambda build for that. If we'll add the M flag, lambda build will generate a meta.json file for us. We can use this file to analyze our bundle and see what is responsible for the new size. So first, let's try to upload and run our new Lambda function and then use the meta.json file to see what is our bundle consist of. So again, from the console, I'm going to upload the new archive and let's run our function. So now every time we run our function, we get an object back with these random values. And that was very easy to install NPM libraries and then load them in our code. And Lambda build generated this JavaScript code for us from our TypeScript code. And as you can see, it also added the slow dash code in line to our bundle. So everything we need for our Lambda function is all in the single index.js file. Now let's see what is the reason our bundle got to two megabytes. On GitHub, in the documentation of Lambda build, there's a link to analyze your bundle by uploading the meta.json file. So we'll go to this website and choose our meta.json file. Now we can see the two megabytes, which is the size of our bundle. And in here we can see that most of the size comes from node modules, of course, but specifically from the faker library. So we know that if we'll remove faker from our bundle, it will be much smaller. And this is where Lambda layers can become very useful. I'll link to a video I did before about Lambda layers and how to use them. Let's say for our example that we'll move the faker library into a layer so we won't need to include it in our bundle. And that's another thing that Lambda build helps us accomplish. We can use the X flag to exclude any of the NPM libraries from our bundle. So for example, let's exclude faker. And now without faker, we can see that our bundle became very small. Again, it's 80 kilobytes. So for the rest of our example, let's just remove Faker from our code. 
Besides bundling the code for us and creating an archive, we can also use Lambda Build to upload our new bundle to AWS for us. So we won't need to do it manually by going to the console and uploading the zip file. To upload our code directly to Lambda, we first need to set up the AWS CLI, which you probably already have set up. But if you don't have a video that explains how to do it step by step. After we configure our credentials, we can ask Lambda Build to upload the bundle for us to AWS. By calling the upload command and specifying the name of the Lambda function, Lambda Demo in our case, we can tell Lambda Build to bundle our code and then create the archive and automatically upload it to AWS. We'll use the same flag to let Lambda Build know about where to find our source code. Now using the upload command, we can create the bundle, create the archive, and then upload it to AWS. Now let's try to change our code and deploy again. So we added a message to our handler. Now let's try to run Lambda build and see if our code was updated. So in the console, we can go directly to test and try to run our function. And now we can see that it's updated to the latest version. So now we can simply change our code, run Lambda build, and our function is automatically updated with the latest version. It can also be useful to go to package.json and add an additional script. Let's say we'll call it deploy and just copy the lambda build command into our deploy script. Now every time we make a change to our code, we can simply run the deploy script and it will do everything for us and also upload our code to AWS so we can simply run it and then see the latest version of our code already deployed. Let's look at another example. I have this Lambda function, which returns a JSON as a response. And I have this URL that uses API gateway to point to this Lambda function. This URL uses the live alias to point to the version of the Lambda function, which we want to use in production. In the previous video, I showed how to set it up and I'll link to that video. Now let's say we make a change to our code. And let's run the deployment script that we built. We can manage the releases of our API using Lambda Body. When we deploy a new change, it goes to the version named latest. So if we'll point our live alias to this version, we can then refresh the browser and see our changes deployed. However, when working on production apps, we don't necessarily want our changes to immediately be deployed. So instead of using the latest version directly, we can publish a new numeric version now this version number three will have the latest code of our function and we can point our live alias to it. This adds an additional release step to our function and gives us the ability to roll back to any other point in time. If we make an additional change to our API and we deploy our changes, they won't immediately be released. We can now control the release. So we'll create a new version and then we'll point the live alias to this new version. And if we'll go back to the browser, we will now see the latest version of our code. And since we created a snapshot of our code at version number three, we can simply roll back to this version and it will immediately take effect. And if we'll refresh the browser, we will now see again version number three of our code. If you learned something from this video, I would really appreciate it if you leave it a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get updates about new videos that I release.